So I just want to say that it's been several days since the, uh, the fatal chokehold death of Jordan Neely. At this point, we still have very limited information, but it's devastating. This never should have happened. This was absolutely terrible. The city and the state have failed us yet again. And we've been pleading with the city and the state and the MTA for the deployment of the social workers in the subway system that the governor promised twice last year. And the fact that the fact that this happened, the fact that anyone would have to uh, feel compelled to restrain someone in a chokehold says something really bad about our city. It's never going to happen. And we don't want to come to any uh, conclusions that are not based on any facts right now. Again, because we don't have enough information, we certainly must not become violent. This is tragic for definitely the family of Mr. Neely and, of course, the family of uh, the one who was straight and too. His life is going to be changed uh, drastically. So I want to know, yeah, I want to know, like, what you think about how the nonprofits are not being out here, like Riders Alliance and uh, Transportation Alternatives. They're not out here for this. Only you guys are. So how you feel about that? You know, there's like been about, what is it, this is the third, it's like the fourth one to be exact, but like technically the fifth about Jordan Neely. Um, you didn't see trans all, you didn't see Riders Alliance, you didn't see Open Plans out for not one of these uh, vigils for um, Jordan Neely. How you feel about that? How your organization feel? That you're the only ones out there doing this? I have kind of, I have several thoughts about that. First of all, from their track record and their continuing record, they have no right to be here. Second of all, if they were actually out for helping the public, helping the everyday passengers that they claim to be serving, they would have come here. They would have actually done a lot more. They actually yeah. done a lot more before this happened to prevent it having in the first place. All right, so what we about the elected officials that's not coming out here for this? They just say something on Twitter and Facebook say that they care about this guy. They they care, but they you know they never did. So how you feel about the elected officials? They they saying they they saying worse sell about Jordan Neely. You know about his death. It is doing photo ops and like photo well, ops. What they're doing is ineffective, and the spreading of the rhetoric that we that we've been seeing this whole week from the elected officials is hurting the cause. This is not how you honor someone who died or advocate for real productive change in our city and our society. So, you know, how you feel about um, the people trying to divide this situation? Like, they, like, people from, like, the far left trying to divide it, trying to make it like, well, it's the Republicans that killed Jordan Neely, it's the Republican vote that he's dead. How you feel about the, like, the so-called political divide within this whole, this whole tragedy? It's, it ultimately ends up hurting the cause. Listen, I understand the anger, and I share the anger. The anger is absolutely unwarranted. But when you start uh, spreading rhetoric, blaming the wrong people, and ultimately, um, getting violent, it just hurts the cause, and you have to be anything for dangerous. So, what do you think? What do you think about the mental health situation in New York State? Um, I know there's a millions of dollars getting pumped into mental health services, but it looks like nothing's getting accomplished out of this. What do you feel about that? And this is a big, this is a big topic about the whole Jordan situation. How do you feel about this, the mental health situation that's going on? Yeah, this is a major failure, as I said, a major failure for, for the city and the state. We've been pleading with them get a hold of the mental health crisis. People are struggling. How can they not see that? We've been pleading with the MTA officials. We've been going to the board meetings, the committee meetings, pleading with them. Take action. This is dangerous for those with uh, mental health issues. This is dangerous for the homeless people on the subway system. And it's dangerous for everyone else. And we need measures to actually take care of this crisis. Yes, in a humane way, but in a way that actually gets the job done. So, yeah, I want to know why, how you feel about how some people on the, like, Twitter, on the internet, trying to bring up his past about his prior arrest. He had 44 prior arrests, and there's video that's circulating all over the internet of him lashing out people on the train, probably the same way he was lashing out to his unfortunate death. So how you feel about that, how they're using his past to justify his death? Like, again, that, again, that's also dangerous because we have very limited information about what transpired right before the restraint. And again, we can't be jumping to these conclusions without any factual evidence to back it up. Because that just becomes dangerous, you're sending the wrong message, and you hurt the cause. So you think so you think today these people here only here just for the photo op or do you think they really care about this guy? Because it's looking like everybody's out here trying to get paid. Everybody trying to get their photo op on. We had like we had like what five rallies this week? 
and like simultaneously, and none of these organizations really touching the issue. Looks like. So, how you feel about that? Personally speaking, and this is uh, my personal capacity, if they were actually going to be advocating for real change, this is not the way to do it. Uh, so, um, what about um, what's going on with the governor? How you feel about her statement, the governor's statement, and the mayor's statement? How you feel about that? Honestly, they, they failed us. I'm really angry with the, the mayor and the governor because they have they've been ignoring us. They've been ignoring our pleas for help. And this was preventable. This never should have happened. If they had actually taken action, this could have been prevented. So we about the we feel about how the statement of the MTA president, the chairman, um, Mr. Jen Lieber, we said recently about this situation. How you feel about that? Honestly, can you repeat what he said? I forgot what he said, but he said he said something to where it's like safe in the subway, etc. I was safe, and we look and look into like mental health resources, etc. He needs to ride the subway with us overnight and uh, see what's going on down there. As we've been pleading with that, it's, 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 not, it's not okay. Oh, and by the way, do yeah. you think that these left officials really actually start to ride a subway, or is it more like a photo op they ride a subway? Because people will say that they, they don't ride a subway at all. I know the few of them actually ride a subway, but it looks like they really tone deaf for how the subway really is. You know, because we know the mayor runs with security, the public advocate goes with security, and the uh, controller goes with security, even the governor goes with security, and we know that they clean the stations up. They clean the station and get the vagrants out. They even get guys out like the late Jordan Neely at the station to make the make the elected officials look good for this MTA. So how do you feel about that? Like the elected officials not running the subway as effective as should like like we are, like the regular person should. Well, first of all, the station should be clean anyway, not just for them. Second of all, they know nothing about what goes on. They know nothing about what we go through. The subway system is a necessity to everyone in New York. And the fact that they can't listen to everyday subway riders, I mean, look what's going on. We just saw that uh, congestion pricing even from the federal partners at the uh, Federal Highway Administration, and this is a separate issue, by the way, that that got approved, and now they're celebrating. This is something they're advocating for. They don't represent everyday people. And I'm really sick of this. It's been going on for way too long. We've been ignored for way too long. And this, uh, all these issues that happen in uh, transit primarily affect those in marginalized communities in the outer boroughs. And unfortunately, people seem to get the illusion that just because it doesn't happen in my hometown does not mean that it doesn't exist. So how you feel about uh, people saying that it's a racial thing? People mostly on the far left saying that this is more racial, and they saying that, well, he got killed because he's black and the guy is white. So how you feel about that? Listen, my a white man my did kill a black man, but all these Can reasons surrounding that okay. are still very unclear. People are gathering down there on the corner as, of as East Coast and the Lafayette. Without actually looking at the facts and going all right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. We gotta go to another rally at two. Sorry, what's your name, sir? I'm uh, Jack Nierenberg. Want me to spell that again? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. It's uh, J is in Jaguar, A is in Alpha, C is in Charlie, K is in Kite. And my last name is Nierenberg. N is in November. I is in India. E is in Echo. R is in Romeo. E is in Echo. N is in November. E is in Bravo. E is in Echo. R is in Romeo. B is in Golf. And I'm the vice president of Passengers United. We're a grassroots. Uh, advocacy organization for uh, better uh, safety, equity, accessibility, et cetera, in our uh, public transportation. Among other things, we elevate the voices of those in underserved communities. And we share, uh, we share the concerns of everyday uh, subway riders, especially in uh, tragedies like this. We go to uh, all the crime scenes that go on and we've been advocating for uh, change for the better. What do you think is the main concern of subway riders after Neil East death? Well, first of all, the main concern that I've been hearing from many people is, oh my God, this could have been me. This could have been me who was strangled. And at this point, the uh, information about what happened right before the chokehold is still very uncertain. But people were, uh, this, this never should have gotten to the point where anyone would have to think that they would have to take matters into their own hands. And what kind of message do you want to send out? First of all, we need productive change. The subways are in a state of emergency right now. We've been pleading with the city and the state and the MTA for the deployment of the 400 uh, social workers 
that the governor promised twice last year, they've been nowhere to be found, and that renders them ineffective because with uh, mental health issues like this, this person, uh, as far as we've been hearing, was homeless. He did not uh, get the treatment that he needed, and the police, when they respond to situations like this, they're not trained to productively deal with mental health situations. So it's not safe for them, and it's not safe for everyone else, and we need a proactive approach that is not only humane for everyone involved, it's actually going to get the job done. I do you think uh, you know, enough shelters where uh, proper uh, mental health care are going to change the situation? Well, at this point, we're seeing that's inadequate, but there, ne there needs to be a uh, reasonable, uh, proactive approach. And the, those people with mental health issues really need to get the uh, care they need. I can't speak about what goes on in the shelters directly, but I can't speak on the serious issue that's going on in the subway system right now. It's not safe for any for anyone. It just uh, ends up causing uh, danger. Again, we're not exactly sure what happened in the moments before this. We heard that uh, Mr. Neely did uh, was uh, disorderly in the subway system, but there's still no information to suggest that he was actually violent yet. We're still waiting. For by, by not safety, uh, what kind of situation do you specifically referring to? I'm referring to, I mean, look at this. We've been going to uh, these various crime scenes with people who have been stabbed, uh, shot, pushed onto the subway tracks, among many other things. And enough is enough. We're fed up with it. New Yorkers don't feel safe. I've really been assaulted on this location. My colleague has been assaulted three times in the subway system the last few years. So we're just really fed up with this. We're sick of being ignored by the MTA. And the city and the state really need to be doing much more to actually tackle this productively. And now the perpetrator has been released. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, first of all, I can't speak exactly what happened, but based on the videos and the footage that I saw, the fact that he was restraining him for at this point, we're still hearing uh, around 15 minutes, and he has his leg wrapped around him. That's pretty excessive, but there is really no other information that we can kind of go from at this point to suggest that he did end up uh, with a uh, malicious intent. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, may I have your contact info? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm a business yeah,